Alrighty, welcome back. So this is going to be part four uh, of the tri-power install here. And uh, you can see here, the car is actually done at this point. <laughs> it's been done for about a year and a half. And uh, so we're actually going to go back in time uh, to whenever I actually was videoing uh, part four. I've uh, just been really lazy about getting all these videos edited and put together. Um, well, let's go back. So part three... Um, it finished up with uh, we got the we got this actually up and running, but there was no body on the car. So part four is going to be basically doing the wire install the harness into the car itself, uh, changing the fuel rail because I did change that. Um, what else are we going to do? Also, I wanted to mention in part three uh, at the very end, whenever I'm showing the wiring on the negative side of the coil, there was a brown wire and a yellow wire. So it turns out the yellow wire is not supposed to be hooked to the coil. It worked, but according to the instructions, because I didn't read them the first time, kind of just glossed right over them. Uh, yeah, that yellow wire is not supposed to be hooked up if you're running a system like this. The yellow wire was for, I don't know, something else, maybe an MSD or something. Anyway, read the instructions, it'll tell you. Uh, but if you're doing something like this where I just have a basic stock distributor with the Pertronics in it, uh, only using that brown wire. So just a heads up on that. And uh, so let's let's go back in time and uh, take a look at what happened in video four. So as much as I love having this old fuel rail uh, coming in here, it was really hard to get it to stop leaking. So even though it looks authentic for the tri power, I just don't trust it. So I'm I'm gonna take it out and I'm gonna. I'm gonna go with the the more modern style uh, hoses and fittings uh, for this setup. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this, and uh, mainly because I got to take these throttle bodies off again so that I can unplug everything. Because uh, where I'm at right now is I got to run this huge wiring harness through the firewall. I gotta put a hole down here, put a grommet there, and it'll come out right, it'll come out right above the heater box, but I'll be able to run the wires down, um, actually underneath, kind of behind, and underneath the heater box there. So, to be able to do that, I have to feed the front of the harness in, because um, I can put, I can put each connector in you know, through the, through the grommet individually. But on the other side, I can't feed it in backwards because of this huge plug right here. So that means I got to disconnect all this stuff. So to disconnect it, um, I got to take at least this throttle body off. And also I have to take this sensor out because I have the wires soldered directly onto it because of how, how big the plug was. Uh, that was in one of my other videos. Um, and I don't want to take the water neck filler off again because I've already got it, the gasket on it and got it glued down. So, so I'm just going to take this throttle body off. So that means I got to disconnect this whole thing. And once I... It leaked like hell the first time I started it, and I had to put so much pressure on these to keep it from leaking. I'm afraid that the vibration of the car, you know, is going to cause these to loosen up. Even if they loosen a tiny bit, I mean, it, it was just spraying everywhere. So even though it looks cool as hell, I, I think it's time to, time to get rid of it. So one last look at it before I take it apart. Okay, so I got that throttle body off. I got the wiring harness out. And uh, again, I took the harness out so that I could feed the uh, the grommet over, you know, over these uh, connector ends here. But what I didn't realize or I forgot about was the oxygen sensor connector is massive. So I had to just end up, I had to cut the, 
uh, cut the grommet. So I just have to stick it in there, super glue it, and put it back together. But I still had to take the harness off anyway, because um, I've got like this thing here, which I had to solder on. Um, but I only did that temporarily just to get, get the car started up. So now what I got to do is I got to go through, and a lot of these wires, they're way too long. So I'm going to shorten them and get everything, uh, cut the wires. Um, going to have to re-solder, you know, so like this one here, I'll just cut it here. I'll shorten it and then I'll solder it inside. And, uh, yeah, so that way it looks a lot cleaner in the engine bay. So I had to take it out anyway. So, uh, what I'm doing now is I got to drill a hole for the grommet. So I'm going to put the grommet, the grommet's going to go right here. I got that little hole drilled there. So I think that's a good spot for it. So it'll come, that harness will come right along the valley here and then just go straight in. And uh, yeah, it'll come right out on top of that, on top of that heater box. So that'll be a good spot for it. But to get in there and drill it, can't drill it from the engine compartment side because I can't get the drill up against there, you know, because it'd be, it'd be up against the, the drill would be up against the engine. So unless I had like some sort of a 90 degree angle type of drill, which actually I do, I could use, I could use a die grinder kind of thing. But instead of doing that, instead of doing that, I'm going to drill it from in here. And I've got this thing set up. So I've got one of these like Fossner bit type things here. It's one inch and then a bunch of connections to go to this little guy here, it'll go into my drill. So that's just going into a, a quarter inch socket adapter. And then I think it's an 11, 30 seconds socket over the end of this hex end on this Fossner bit. So I'll be able to get that in there because it's in there pretty deep. So I'll be able to just drill that in there like that. So. I'm going to put some tape on the other side of the firewall so it doesn't all splinter out when I go through it. Hopefully, anyway, that's the plan. I don't know how well it's going to work, but... Okay, so you can see I've got all the way through there. The little piece is hanging in there by the tape. So, let's see how it, let's see how it looks on the other side here. All right. We got, yeah, that'll work. Good enough. Now I'll see if I get the grommet in there and I have to kind of touch up some of the fiberglass edging there. Yeah, that should work. All right, the grommet's in there now. We got the harness in. So that'll work nice, I think. Good and clean. We'll keep everything nice and tight up in here. And so now I just gotta have to extend a few of these and chop a few of them off. And that's what I'm gonna do now. I'll get these wires set to the correct length. I'm getting the new fuel system plumbed up here. And I've decided to just go with the standard AN fittings here. Um, Nothing too crazy. It took a little while to figure out exactly what pieces I need to make this whole thing work. Because it actually took a while, um, you know, going through, looking at all the different available AN fittings to try and figure out what's going to be the best option. So I didn't want to put, you know, like a piece of hose from here out to a T fitting because then it'd be all like loose and floppy out here. Um, you know, and then on a lot of the Mopars that I've seen people do, they run, you know, big pieces of hose out, you know, to some sort of a block or something. And it, it just doesn't really have the look, you know, that I was kind of going for. But it had to be out far enough that it's out of the way of the throttle linkage. 
but I didn't want it sticking way out here along the edge of the valve cover, making it difficult to get the valve cover off, especially since I've got uh, a solid lifter uh, cam in here. So being able to get into the valve train and adjust those rockers is important. So I didn't want that fuel system hanging way out. So uh, just a combination of all these fittings to make this whole thing work. Um, it seems really simple now looking at it, but man, it took a while to get it all to get it all licked. So uh, right now what I'm working on uh, is the little pieces of hose that are gonna go between here. So here's what I've got set up here. So two hose ends here, and there's gonna be just a little piece of hose between here. Um, you know, I, I don't wanna use the tube nuts and use like the metal tubing between here. Um, I just don't think that the metal tubing, not metal, I shouldn't say metal, I mean steel tubing. So uh, this kind of steel tubing here, whether it's steel or copper, brass, whatever the hell, you know, it just doesn't, uh, I don't, I don't feel like it makes a, a good connection to the aluminum. You know, it's almost like, cause you got two different kinds of materials. They just don't seem to, uh, conform to each other well enough to make a good seal. Um, so I didn't want to use the steel tube in here with tube nuts, which would have been the easy way to go. Like I did on the other one. I think the biggest problem really was these brass fittings. These here just... You know, they just, I don't think they're really designed for um, 60 PSI fuel injection setup. Now, they did work eventually once I really cranked down on them. Um, you know, but like I mentioned earlier, I, I put so much torque on them, I thought I was going to round these, these nuts off. I mean, actually, some of them are pretty rounded. That's how much pressure it took to get these to quit leaking. Uh, so, I decided, you know, that's got to go. Now the tube nuts, they definitely didn't leak as much. Um, I think it was, I think it was this one here. This one definitely did leak. Um, and, it, and it could be my flare. You know, my flaring tool is probably not, not the best. If I had a better flaring tool, I could probably get a better, uh, you know, it could match the angle a little bit better. So that's probably part of the problem. I, I don't know. I just don't like it. So I'm not, I'm not using the tube nuts. So I decided... I'm just going to use all aluminum and the rubber tubes, which means I got to do a tiny little piece of hose in here. So what I'm doing is I've got everything tightened down and now I'm measuring with these all twisted up actually like that. And so I'm just measuring the gap here and then, uh, which I think was like seven millimeters. And so what I did was I just measured the inside distance of, of this uh, uh, hose end up to where the hose meets the inside there. So that way I'll know how long that piece of hose needs to be. So I'm still waiting on my angle piece here. I had to order it. Um, I ordered two of them and neither of them worked. The one that I ordered, the radius was too big so it came too far out. And then the second one that I ordered, uh, the hose end was too big, which was really strange because it was uh, it was a 6AN, which is what I'm using. But where the hose end goes in, it was really large diameter. Uh, no idea. Even though the inside was correct, you know, for a 3 8 fuel line, but this piece was way too big, so... Now I'm waiting on another one. So as soon as I get that, I'll be able to get this fuel system all plumbed up, uh, which will be awesome. Because right now I can't, I've got pretty much everything in here ready to go as far as getting all the uh, electronics tested out and get the battery in it. Uh, also when I get the radio tested and everything else that I've worked on. But I can't, I can't put the battery in for fear that, you know, this fuel rail might pressurize on me. <clears throat> unexpectedly and that would not be good so in case anything is messed up in the wiring I don't want that thing to turn on so that's kind of my hang up right now got that little piece of hose in there that was a little easier than I expected I thought that was going to fight me a little bit so that's looking nice it's looking uh 
as good as it's going to get. Um, this is the bigger fitting here with the, the radius is too large here, as I was mentioning before. And also it's a little too long this way, so there's no gap between here. So I ordered one that doesn't have this like uh, bendy tube thing here. It's just got like a machined block. Okay, got my fuel line finished up here. I got this uh, 90 degree piece here. This is the one I was waiting on. And uh, you can see it's probably five or six pieces shy of, of a thousand piece fuel line. Yeah, it was uh, a little ridiculous, but I just turned the key on, got the fuel rail pressurized and we got no leaks. So good to go on that. And we're gonna fire this thing up here in a minute. And uh, this thing hasn't been started since the part three video that I made, which I wanna say was June or July of last year. So that's uh, what, today. this is May. So we're, we're at 11 months now. Uh, since this thing has been started and uh, it's got a year old gas in it and everything else. So going to do a few more things, get a couple things buttoned up and then uh, fire this thing up after it's been sitting for a year. Now I did go through every couple of months and I, I turned the crankshaft, you know, by hand just to, uh, so it doesn't sit in the same place for a year. I'm going to disable the computer for now so that there's no, um, so that there's no spark or anything. Um, we got the coil disconnected here. So I just wanna crank it, get the uh, oil pressure up, you know, cause I'm sure the engine's bone dry at this point. Also, I'm gonna check, make sure the uh, oil gauge is working. And, uh, and then once we have all that going, we'll go ahead and crank her up. Can't run it for long. I still don't have the radiator hooked up, but we don't need that just to start it up temporarily. So we got the ignition disabled, so I'm gonna go ahead and crank it here and get some oil pressure rolling. spinning that's good so the uh, little tack adapter I put in that thing's working all right 